I, Elika Sheve, Ele of Darkness, open my eyes once more on the places where I died. My invisible visit casts neither image nor shadow on your streets. I am approaching you this time only as a witness to fill the gaps in my distorted story. Let your patience be my helper. Let my story awaken in your memories and hearts. Allow it to be your guide. Before I begin, let's listen to the Saz. Sheve, Ele of Darkness. For centuries, as a genie, my destiny was to make people live in pain, in suffering, in fear. In these places that you see now, I used to visit the homes of newborn babies and take them back to where they came from. When the world was asleep and the moon was silent, I would approach their cradles ever so slowly and gently do what I had to do. With my delicate hands, with my beautiful long fingers, I would steal the hearts of babies, causing them no pain, no suffering, their souls would fly out in the most innocent age. Their bodies would remain unharmed, without a trace, but the cold wind passing through. I left hundreds of mothers in tears. I, Elika Sheve, the first word of darkness, in the days of old, before you were even born, would lay on you at the dearest color of a night. Put my mouth on yours so that no one could hear your voice. 
I would be so heavy that you could not even move a finger. I would draw a curtain around you so that no one could see you struggle. You would feel breathless. You would feel numb as you awoke from the edge of death. The heaviness of weight is what you called me. It was a time of hunger when I was caught. I was on my way home in the early hours of dawn on a white horse. I was riding her like the wind. She was the strongest, wildest of all, her hair braided by me. She was named Hayal. The land was Sivas, maybe Dersim. It was Yilan Lida and maybe Munsur. It was the grandfather of Orde, the grandfather of Ane, the grandfather of Ahmed the Yusuf, and many others whom you might know, who owned the horse and caught me by a needle. Under the light of a single candle, a hand reached out to my dress and sunk the needle into my favorite blue basme. I don't know if it was the mystery of the needle or the hand of the holder, but I became visible to you for the first time. I saw the needle's holder and greeted him. There were three of you in the stable and two of you were about to enter the door. Seven of you woke up at the time from a dream. I received no harm. You gave me warm milk to drink and shelter to sleep. I chose to serve you with all my heart. I made infinite loaves of bread out of one. You all watched me in amazement, with respect, as I brought you abundance and the rain. The doubt between us began to wash away. And I saw the magic in your lives, the gift to be born, to have lived. I saw illusion, denial and limitation, love, beauty and conflict. Months passed, and so did years. I became homesick, as you do for loved ones. Days passed, and the day came. As a reward for my devotion, you gave me permission to leave. Next morning, just before sunrise, you took me to the water. I knew I would die. As I passed into my own world, I was rejected by my family. Because I had been tainted by your human touch, the verdict was death. Slowly, 
I let my blood flow into the water so that you could witness my fate. I was sad. I was relieved. I was lost. I entered into nothingness. Much time has since flown over this land. Many lions and deer too have drunk from the same river. Migrating birds have left their shadows on its water. And on its banks, two reeds have grown. One dark, one light. Now, once again, the wind is whispering, long, calm, a strange, timeless journey to take. The hours of cold morning are passing now. I see these places almost deserted and empty. Stones are not assembled anymore, and houses are in ruins. You have traveled great distances. Now you live in foreign lands. Drink water, but from rivers you have never known. Your children have food have clothing, have schools, but you have neighbors with whom you cannot speak. Well, Ibrahim, you are one of them. Do you know that your grandmother is waiting for your call? She is knitting socks in her house to sell using red patterns on them to tell she misses you very much but she is well don't feel lonely you're not alone in this endless cycle of wandering some believe it is for the best, for some it is not, for some it is destiny, for some it is reality, it is the fact. It is so good that you forget quickly what has been left. It is necessary sometimes to become blind and deaf. Only human desire causes time to change. I am afraid this speed of change takes me away from you. In every word that you write, not only will you forget my name, but the meaning will become sand. Sand which can fly far on a strong wind. My existence carried to the edge of fragmentation. Well, for you it is also the most difficult time of all. If I am not to blame anymore for the torment of your lives, how will you deal with the darkness in you then? Oh, the mechtevden Vardım bir eren 
Direnif okudu, çok hesap çıktı. Bir elif iş nokta geldi bir yere Ezber ettim andayın dört kitap çıktı Mürşidü Kamil'den dinledim kandım Mürşidü Kamil'den dinledim kandım ben ara sırından girdim uyandım Fena mülkümü bir kapı sandım Merdeğlimi çarmamı çıktı